Hello, good people of the internet, and welcome back to the third video of this series on how to build a photography website using WordPress and the theme Generate Press. Today, we will be customizing the bare bones gallery built in last week's video. This is going to be the type of video where I will show you how it's done, but you will have to do things your way, hopefully using the knowledge you've gained. Without any further ado, let's log into the WordPress backend. Wait, no, there is a short ado. Because this video is part of a series and there will be more coming up, I implore you to subscribe to my channel. You won't want to miss out on the next couple of WordPress videos and all the other exclusively high quality content I release. As an added bonus, you will be helping helping me reach the magical 1000 subscriber mark. That is all. We are not actually going to be using the backend right now and will instead be using the customizer. I guess the customizer is a part of the backend, but I've always looked at it as something separate. Back to what is relevant. If by now you don't have a color palette for your website at the ready, I suggest you do that now before continuing. I've updated the one you are seeing right now using Adobe Colors Theme Extraction. Of course, I only did it after I was halfway through the screen recording. Using the color extractor, you can upload any photo and it will create a palette based on it for you. I went for a more muted look using the options on the left hand side and I also made sure my theme was colorblind safe. Besides being colorblind safe, I also recommend checking the colors uh, contrast against white or black text. WebAIM.org has a color checker for exactly this purpose and you should aim for at least WCAG AA compliance. AAA if you want to go the extra mile. If you only set one color in the customizer, that color should definitely be the body's background, as it will be the background of our gallery too. This way you get to see whether your gallery design looks good or not. If you were to do everything on a white background now, other colors you add two elements might just not look good anymore when you change it. Another thing I did in the customizer was remove all the content padding. This allows me to set the paddings using my block element, giving me more control over the spacing. In the same menu, you can also adjust the container's width if you wish to do so. While I'm at it, I will also disable the sidebar on all pages and on the blog. Single posts will still display the sidebar, but we won't be covering them in this video. Subscribe. There is one more thing I want to do in the customizer and that is to have my photos A in a grid and B have that grid be a masonry. Unfortunately, it appears that GeneratePress, for whatever reason, isn't capable of displaying these galleries which are using a custom post type in columns. But as with so many things when it comes to working with GeneratePress, there is an easy way around that and it's not just some hack. The workaround comes in the shape of a code snippet. As we already installed the plugin last week, we can already add the required code. I will leave a link to the code in a pinned comment. By the way, if you are confused about the images suddenly changing on my site, I did what I recommend is you should do midway through the screen capturing and uploaded my own photos to the galleries. Now on to the fun part and the reason you're watching this video, styling those galleries. I'm going to walk you through a few different possibilities so you have the chance to use the full power of generate blocks once you do it. The first thing I want to do is adjust my typography because looking at the gallery my heading 2 is far too large and bold. Instead of editing the block element I will however be using the customizer for this job. That way all headings on my site will be adjusted. In the customizer you could also change your font. I am going to stick to the system stack as that is the fastest font you can have. If you were to go with a Google font that font would have to be downloaded by each visitor's browsers if that's something you're willing to accept go ahead and pick whatever you want. But if you do so, keep the fonts you use down to the bare minimum. Do not set individual fonts for every heading as that would massively slow down your site. What I do have to adjust in the headline block is to unbold it. Is that a word? 
And that already makes a considerable difference. With our headings in order, we can continue with the styling. I've got two containers left, one containing the photo and the other containing the post title. Speaking of the post title, it still is a bit too thick for me and draws the eye away from the photo, so I'm going to change its weight, making it lighter. I am now going to give the container in which that title is placed a more fitting background color. To make it blend in a bit more, I am also going to make it slightly opaque. A quick look at the gallery confirms what I had already suspected. A border is needed. And that is what I'm going to do. With the border, the individual photos with their titles underneath them look more like cards placed on a table. And that is the look I am going for here. Let's say the title isn't the only bit of text you want to display in that card. You want to give the viewer a short backstory to how the photo was taken. What we can do is open up the photo and and add some text using the editor. Once saved, we will head back to our block element and add a dynamic content block, which is part of Generate Press. The dynamic content we want displayed is the post content. If we save the block and refresh the gallery, you will see that that sentence we just added to the photo is now displayed underneath the title. We might have to play with the margins a bit to make it fit properly, but personally, I don't like having it there as it takes up too much space where, in my opinion, photos should be. So I'm going to remove it again. In line with the thought of our photos being laid out on a table, I'm going to add a slight shadow to them using the Generate Blocks effect panel. I like the idea of having the photo over which the cursor is currently hovering being brought into focus using effects. I do the same with my blog posts on other websites. You do have the option of grayscaling or blue blurring photos that aren't being hovered over, but in a photography gallery, I want to avoid changing the look of any photo. For example, if a visitor were to view the gallery and all they saw were blurry photos, they might think I'm a rubbish photographer and leave before moving the cursor anywhere over the page. What I can do is create the impression that the photo is being brought closer to the viewer's eye. How do I do that? using a changing shadow and slightly scaling the whole container. The first shadow I'm going to add will be the one shown when the photo isn't being hovered over, or as you would call it in programming, when its state is normal. Because the card I'm visualizing is close to the table, I'm going to add only a little blur to the shadow and make it more concentrated and sharper. You will also want to click on the Add Transformation button whenever you add an effect. That will make the effect appear slowly and not instantly. Using the hover state, so when the photo is in focus, I'm going to add more blur to the shadow, giving the impression that it is being brought closer to the light source and away from my imaginary table. All of us hopefully know that it's not just the shadow that changes when you bring something closer to the eye, but also the perceived size of that object. A slight increase in size can be done using the transform effect. In this case, I am only setting the scale to about 100.4%. For me, that looks just about right. On to another feature Generate Blocks provides, shapes. In the case of a photo gallery, I don't think it adds anything and it might even have a detrimental effect, but I do want to show you what is possible. Shapes can be used with any container block and I use them frequently on my sites to add some pizzazz. To add a shape, I'm going to select my container and open up the appropriate panel. Here you can select the shape from a number of built-in options and set its color. Not only that, you can define the location, define its width and flip it horizontally. In this example, I'm going to add a short angled shape to the top of the container. As you might have seen, there are a number of built-in options, but the possibility of another person using the same shape for the same purpose as you is existent. The good folks in charge of Generate Blocks have thought of this and there is a solution that will almost certainly make your shape unique, or should I say, your shapes.
because you can, in fact, add multiple shapes. Each shape provides the full set of options and you could combine white angles with purple triangles and pink waves. You can also place shapes towards the bottom and the top of the container. Once saved, we can take another look at our gallery and look, the shape is there. And that's shapes for you. One last thing I want to show you is how to create different styles for different galleries. The first thing I'm going to do is copy my current layout and paste it into a new block element. For demonstration purposes I am going to add a V icon to my headline. But you could design this layout however you want. You could also for example make the card green for landscape photos and white for white and black photos black and white photos. I will be applying the style to any photo in the landscape category. In this first example that is. What this means is that a photo which has been assigned to both the landscape and black and white gallery will have this style, even in the black and white gallery. To do so, set the location to all photo gallery archives and in the right hand panel you will want to apply the layout to posts with the gallery term landscape. If we save the layout and take a look at the landscape gallery, you will see that they all now have the same icon. That makes sense because they are all in the landscape gallery. However, in the black and white gallery, one image also has the same icon because it has been assigned to both the landscape and black and white gallery. This might be something you wish for. If however you want the icon to only be seen in the landscape gallery, you can follow the following steps. What you want to do is set the location to only the landscape photo gallery archive. Then open the previous layout and exclude the landscape photo gallery archive from that one. And now we have a style that only applies to the gallery page. Let's now move on to the galleries I'm actually considering for my photography website. The first option is as simple as it gets a container and the featured image. I added a slight bit of padding and nothing more. The effects are very similar to what I set up in my previous example. When the cursor hovers over one of the photos, it'll slightly expand and a box shadow will appear. In this case, that shadow is white and not black. One issue I had with this setup is that for some reason a large margin appeared underneath each photo. A bit of digging revealed why. Because I had assigned the CSS class WP block image to the container in the previous video, it was using that class's bottom margin. A few lines of custom CSS solved that issue for me. What you are looking at now is the second gallery I built. Considering the time it took for me to create this thing, I feel like I should be loving it, but something just isn't quite right yet. I think I'll have to play around with the borders and such some more. What is special about this design though, and the reason I'm showing it to you, is the little information icon you can see in the bottom left corner. What happens if I scroll over it? Ooh, the title appears. Here's how I did it. Everything is packed into a container with no spacing whatsoever. Into that container I added a dynamic image and a headline. I first made the headlines font smaller because having the title stretch two lines would mess things up, but I still kept it as a heading too. I then went ahead and set a negative top margin. That is what makes it overlap the image. The bottom margin came about through experimentation. The negative top margin would make the photos overlap in the gallery and we can't be having that. So I had to compensate by setting a bottom margin. I'm sure there are ways of calculating the exact number of pixels but experimenting might be the faster option. Next I added the icon can set the paddings to what I wanted them to be and also shrunk the icon itself a little bit. The magic happens in the effects panel. The first effect hides the text by using a custom selector. That way the icon will remain in its normal state while the text is nowhere to be seen. The text isn't actually hidden, its opacity is simply set to zero. The second effect makes the text appear whenever a visitor's cursor hovers over it. That is done by changing the opacity to 1. The third effect only targets the icon and makes it disappear when hovered over. 
I also went ahead and added some text shadow so the text remains legible against backgrounds of different colors. Our galleries are definitely starting to take shape, don't you think? Except of course for the disgusting header and gallery title. Too bad this video has already gone on for long enough and we will have to change the site's general design next week. Subscribe! If this video was helpful in any way, please do leave me a like as a show of appreciation. It really makes a difference. If however you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. With that said, it has been just about enough from me for one day. I've been Neil Alexander Coleman and this has been me telling you about how to create a good looking gallery. You have not been Liam Alexander Coleman, but I will see you in the next one. Bye!